Here's Johnny. It's funny how Jazz is in that movie. What is up, everybody? Nick Legostava here, about to bring you a review of Transformers Studio Series 86 Jazz from the two, the 1986 Transformers movie. Now, this figure right here was a nightmare to find. I had to go to so many stores. I went to another store, and they said the store that I was at last just got it in, so then I went back to that store just to get this figure, and I've already done some customization I will talk about in this video, but without further ado, let's get into the review. So, this figure is pretty good, but let's get to the negatives right off the bat, because this knee right here, they've, they've done this a lot with some of the new Transformers, where they have like a separate joint that it's supposed to lock into, for the knee to work, but you have to hold it, you have to pinch the back of it when you move the knee. So that's a negative. Also, this doesn't come naturally like this with this red stripe right there. I painted it. I ran out of blue paint. I was going to do the blue around it, but I just had enough to do the, the tips right there for now. But that is something I definitely recommend doing right away. And another negative with mine is this arm is really loose. Like it can't really hold up. It just kind of it wants to fall down pretty easily. So you'll probably just run into that, but that's regular quality at this point with Hasbro, so that's what you do. But yeah, of course he's nicely articulated, just like the Siege figures. You know, there, like I said, there's probably a lot of crossover on like, uh, what characters are we going to put in Kingdom and this and that, or are we going to put it in Studio Series 86? So all the figures were probably designed at one time. And then they devise these separate lines because those characters probably aren't in the Netflix show. So they're like, hey, here you go. So it's great to have them all come out at the same time. Also, to mention, I'm going to have a lot of size comparisons in this review as well. Actually, ten, over 10 size comparisons for you. But another negative is this wrist hollowness. Now, I wish they did a flap like they did on Hot Rod. But that's not the case, but that flips in. You do lose wrist rotation because of that as well. I think that's the only point of articulation he doesn't have because he does have a waist swivel. He does have ankle tilt, although the ankle tilt on mine is very, very tight. I feel like I'm going to break that every time I try to do it. So I'm not really going to mess with that a whole lot. And then another negative. I know I'm just going over the negatives first, but I like to get that out of the way. But... This this whole back part is clear plastic. That's not going to age well. I mean, sure, it's fine for now, but all these hinged, hinged areas, that, that's going to easily break in transforming in the future, which I will show transformation in this video, but I want to get into size comparisons first. So here he is with Netflix Bumblebee, another person that was in the movie alongside him i will move the boxes so you can see the more the light set up i didn't really go over the boxes but that's not important i'll show you the display towards the end here he is with siege red alert i know he wasn't in the 86 movie but just another size comparison for the lineup and then here he is with hot rod of course so they definitely shrunk him down even though he's a deluxe and he is deluxe size that they sold as a Voyager, but he he is on the smaller side of the modern deluxe. So yeah, there he is. Here he is with Creo Jazz, which was funny enough, this was my only G1 style jazz for a long time. And then Earthrise Optimus Prime with some of my custom paint done to him right there. I also have vehicle mode size comparisons as well, but I'll wait till I get him into vehicle mode. There he is with a MicroMaster. You know, it's important to see scale of figures just to make sure he's lined up nicely with some other people. So there he is with Siege Megatron and the Netflix version with my custom 3D printed refractor in his hand. Well, reflector that they renamed into refractor. You'll also see that on there, but this video is not about that. This video is about jazz, and I have one more size comparison, then we'll get into transformation and whatnot. So, 
Here he is with 2007 Deluxe Chaz from the Bay Bayverse. So there's the best G1 that we've ever got. And then this, I still think, is the best Bayverse one we ever got. Because the Masterpiece, I mean, number one, it's really expensive. And the shoulders are really bulky. And the Studio Series was way too small. And it was actually more inaccurate. This is more accurate besides the ears. But this isn't a review of him. That's just what he looks like with him. This was $10. This is $20 with a lot more hollowness and less quality, I would say. But there you go. All those size comparisons out of the way. Oh, wait, let's show him his moon base display here. That's pretty nice. Nice little displayage for him. And... Oh wait, one more negative is this gun was really, the tolerance on this gun, for me at least, is really hard to get in and out of the hand. But let's get into transformation within the time of this video. So hopefully everyone can find this figure. I know it was really hard for me to find this figure, but hopefully it'll be easier in the future. I just wanted to get it as soon as I could because... I love Jazz a lot. He's probably one of my favorites of the G1 Autobots. Definitely in the top 10 for sure. Maybe even top 5. But yeah, hopefully everything tabs in right. This is the first transformation out of the box for me. But it seems like it'll be pretty easy. I'm pretty decent at transforming the more simple transformers in a decent time. Where does that go, though? It seems like it would flip backwards. And, you know, this is just kind of what most people do. I mean, unless you're one of the people that look at instructions. It's just something you figure out yourself. Oh, wow. This piece is on a... <laughs> it's just clipped in there. I thought that would be pinned in there. All right. Well, that's strange. But I can't seem to get that to... That looks odd. I have no clue what, what's happening with that. But we'll get back to that. After this simple part back here, this hinges in a strange way. That's probably going to break over time because of clear plastic. But Hasbro thinks that uh, clear windows are just such an oddity that we just need. Like, it's just so necessary for us to have clear windows on animated figures. I suppose for movie, because you want like a more accurate vehicle, but you're trying to look like an animation model, and you have clear windows. It's just pretty counterproductive. Oh, there was another flap on the inside that flipped up. All right. I see what's happening here. I see. Where do these arms go, though? Where do the arms go? All right. Sorry about that. I had to do a jump cut because there was some... I didn't have this piece flipped around, so I had to do a jump cut because I didn't have that piece flipped around. I knew the arms went down there, but I was like, damn. So that's just that weird piece has to flip around. But this, the transformation is not as solid as I thought it would be. And not necessarily as enjoyable as I want it to be. I did transform it a couple more times off camera. But this part right here likes to pop off easily. I don't know if anybody else has mentioned that. And the paint matching back here is really bad. Like, the videos that I've seen of this guy, the paint matching looked good, but yeah, the paint matching is not good right there. So there's that out of the way, and that really does add that extra flair that I think the vehicle mode needed right there, as well as accuracy for that. So there's that. Let's get into vehicle mode size comparisons. Here he is with that 2007 deluxe it's actually the premium series one so it has the the silver paint but it still was the same price as a regular deluxe back in the day i mean look at that that's like masterpiece size compared to what you pay more for now <laughs> yeah here he is with earthrise just the shell of it <laughs> the earthrise rc selects tiger track and side swipe or not side swipe red netflix red alert and I wanted to show both of these for these 3D printed ones. Which one do you like more? This one's more accurate. And I spent more time working on this one. But tell me what you think of those in the comments below. And Gigawatt right there. 
someone did win that giveaway, so shout out to that person. And then Earthrise Optimus Prime, we will see if he fits in the trailer, but I highly doubt it because no one fits in the trailer. <laughs> but yeah, let's, oh wait, I also wanted to show you this 3D printed jazz that I just kind of shifted around after this, but who knows, maybe I'll get to it, maybe I won't. Let's pop that open. Front can fit, but the back cannot fit. So you can make it look like he's driving up into there, but you can't really do too much with that because I made this trailer too damn small. And it's, why? Why'd you do that? Why'd you have to go and do that? But there he is. They also did this annoying thing. This review actually turned out to be a little more negative than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was really going to love this figure, but it has this really a stupid pin up front. Why? Do they do this? They have done this several times where it's uneven. They have uneven wheels, like different in the front, different in the back. It's strange. It's strange. I know they did it on like, what was it, Titans Return Beachcomber 2? I don't have that yet, but I'm waiting for it in the mail. But they've been doing that for a while now with these pinned wheels. You know, when I was not collecting Transformers for a while, they used to have pinned wheels back in the day, but then I didn't collect them for a while, and then I get back to collecting Transformers, and then do this cheap, cheaped out kind of trash, not as good as pinned wheels. At least this seems to roll decent. Most of the time I get pins that are like uneven somehow, and it doesn't roll. It ends up not rolling, but yeah. And it says, I might as well just go over that too. I don't know why the light just shifted weirdly. It says 14 instead of 4. I know it's probably something for Diaclone. I, I just wish they had the 4. I might remove the 1. I mean, I know the 4 would be off-centered, but at least it would be more accurate. So just remove that. And I wish I had the power of the Primes because I did actually order that because I wanted another combiner limb. But I don't have that for size comparison right now, even though I have it ordered because I got a really good price on it. That's the only reason I got that when I have this. And I didn't intend for this video to be 15 minutes, but it was. I doubt anybody actually made it to the end, but tell me in the comments if you made it to the end, and tell me what you think of this figure, and if you would like to see reviews of the Kingdom figures, that's incoming, as well as many other figures, many other things non-Transformer related as well, with Lego stuff, custom 3D printed stuff, eventually Hot Wheels stuff. So there you go. Have a great day. Peace. Bye-bye. There was actually something else I forgot to mention in the review. I guess I'll mention it in technically the credits, but um, this part right here, the back of the vehicle, looks a little too small. It looks out of scale with the front end of the vehicle. I think that they could have made that back end a little bigger, at least width-wise, to make that look a little better and hide the feet poking out of the back a little more. I think they could have did that, but it was probably just for the feet or something, so that's why they didn't make it longer, but... They could have made it wider. I think at one point they wanted this to fit in Optimus' trailer, and that's just a leftover design of it from that.